Willie D. Live. Man, how real was that smack you gave Regina King? <laughs> <laughs> how how just... real was the kick she kicked me? I, 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 ask me that. <laughs> was that real? How real was Dude, the kick? Dude, she must have kicked me about 50, 60 times. And then it took a break. Oprah was there, too. How close did it get to you? Man, to it, a lot, a lot. Because it was like, you know, she had to keep kicking in the... supposed to be the camera angle, but it looked like she was supposed to kick me in my private part. Uh -huh. She kept kicking me in my, my hamstring or on my thigh. So it looks like, you know, you got it in there. And, and it was like, yeah, ah, yeah, try it again. That looked, ah. looked like a real fight, man. Yeah, well, it looked like. Now, Tupac and I, we did have a little something because he was, he was tripping back then. He was a little high and mm -hmm. he was getting, he was feeling himself. He punched me in the mouth a couple times, didn't want to wear shoulder pads, didn't want to wear knee, knee things. And, and it was like, yo, you're fighting on gravel. He was, he was just getting wild, so. He punched you in the mouth a couple times. Yeah, dude. You, that was like, dude, dude. Did you get any licks in? Oh, I slammed the shit out of his ass. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I was slamming the, I heard the what, shoulder. What, what, what Fox say when you slam? <laughs> hey, ow. On that ground. <laughs> got up. He, he put that brain, he put that shoulder thing on. I mean, God rest his heart. But, but yeah, you better go put that uh, stunt uh, shoulder thing on because it's a pad you're supposed to have. I don't need none of that Lock it all up. Yeah. We got it. <laughs> I was like, dude, because it's you got to time the stuff. He was he got all into it, and he meant to punch me too. Yeah. Because I was I had, I was talking about him because he was he started being late toward the end of the movie, so I used to just crack on him all the time, talk about it, you know, about his hair falling out, and he finger that he's always chewing on his nails. But he was going through that stress thing. We didn't know it at the time. Uh -huh. He was going through that, but then later. But I used to always talk about him. I used to tell him he's like a magpie, you know what I'm saying? So, sitting over there by himself, you know, because he's, you late, man. I'm joining on you. I'm cracking on you. And Janet and Regina used to be laughing like, he go, he go get you. So he punched me for real during the fight scene. He pop, pop. I was like, dude, okay. Now, what kind of excuse would he give you for being late? You know, I think he was just running out of weed. And the closer we got to Oakland, <laughs> he was making weed runs. Because <laughs> we actually drove the whole way. Like, that's a six, seven hour. Yeah. yeah so, but that we made it the trip, the, the 12 weeks that we stopped in certain places and filmed. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, in between, they were real weed. So, the closest place is either going back to LA or going to Oakland. So, it was either three or two hours. That way, it depends on how further we, we were on the trip. And and you know that's what it was. He was you know he was cut. But I'm you know I wasn't smoking weed like that then. You know how do I do? I I get it. I was like yeah. I'd have been like where my weed at? Somebody go get it. Cause his brothers used to go get it. You know what I'm saying? But then he used to you know have somebody come get him. <laughs> but, man, what, or, or he used to just trill cause we cause we was out there in the boonies, man. We were out there. There's nothing up against that. You know if you're traveling, St. Louis Obispo, it's like peacocks and and there's niceness. But you know they blowing the biggest thing in town is they shooting pool and blowing glass. You know what I'm saying? It was a glass town. We, we live in little cities like that where we were. You know we just go and throw darts and you know. We, but it was it was a good expression to get out of the city. John was magnificent with that. Yeah. Man, what's the true story behind the kiss, though? The kiss that um, they said that uh, something about Janet was no. asking Pac to go take an AIDS test. No, no, that, that was Janet's people. That was her people yeah. saying that? So at the beginning of the movie... But she had to agree to it. No, at the beginning of the movie, she uh, she got a cold. Q-tip had a cold. Remember, she kissed Q-tip mm -hmm. before he got shot. You know what I'm saying? That was a boyfriend before that. So that's why she was writing that poetry and going through that stuff. But she caught a cold. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't work for like three, four days. How'd she know she got it from Q-Tip? She did, because he had a cold. Okay. Yeah, so, but then you had to adjust stuff. So, you know, but when Janet don't work, about 20 people don't work. Just really quick, though. She kissed because they tip knowing he had a cold. No, I mean, but they, they, they traced it back to that because okay. she couldn't come, and right. you know, and then when the one kiss, they had seen kissing in the car, yeah. doing that stuff, you know. So right. whatever it was, Janet back then, Janet it was a business and a brand. So mm -hmm. she come with the whole crew. You know what I'm saying? How many people? Um, well, I, I would say on the set, she probably had like six people with her, just security, and then you know, her handlers and stuff like that, food cooks like that. But she was a professional. Professional. I work with Janet anytime. The 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 easiest, the most comfortable, the the, the best. Uh, a team player. You know I'm saying she loaded up her trailer and they told her they need her back for another shot. She came back, unpacked, boom, did her stuff. Your Janet was always professional, always on time, always stay late, always there. True professional. She but seemed to be that way. I seen her in a lot of those Tyler Perry movies and stuff, and she seemed to be. She just seems easy going. If man. she, she wasn't, yeah. 
we know. Yeah, you know. She used to come to my t- trailer and just talk to me by herself. And I'd yeah. you know, come to my room and, Joe, what you doing? We used to go out to Malibu. She used to have, you know, um, she she helped me with my worth ethic and working out. Mm-hmm. We'd be out there doing jet skiing and barbecuing and you park, for real, before the park thing. We used to, Virginia King, we'd be all out there with the little Jackson Tito and them sons and stuff, jet skiing. And I'm like, where'd Janet go? And she'd be gone. She'd disappear for like an hour. And he's like, oh, she's upstairs working out. And I'm like, what? And she had a gym built in. Her trainer would be over there working out. And she'd be like, what? So she was kicking it with us for about two hours. And so the trainer came over like around, you know, five. And she worked out. And she came back, kicked kick it again, ate some food. It was like, got it in. She, a machine. So those abs were real. She really works, really sweats. And I'm like, okay, I need to get a gym in my house. Okay, I need to be doing this. You just pick up little things about how how to be a star right. and and she was very professional with that right. but i'm saying when i saw that happen when um she, she got cold from Q-tip. Q-tip. so when tupac was you know tupac was feeling himself remember tupac was 20 turned 21 at mm-hmm. the time so uh when he was feeling himself he was you know he was he was he had a lot of girls in and out the trailer he laid he was doing what he wanted to okay and then they had a little thing about there, okay, girls were saying saying stuff like, okay, he, I think he gave me an STD or kinky. It, it was something about he had a dirty dick or something like that. But I guess girls were saying that because he was, oh, well, because he this one running out the trailer, this one left eye was here, this one was over here, this one was up. He was running them, they, they were just in and out. So it looked like, okay, he getting busy. So her people and them saw that, they was like, eh. Before we get really, 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 really deep, because they're going to have a, a more intense love scene. They got a kiss. They're going to be there for, you know, it's like a day. They're supposed to have love scene, make love on the beach and all that. That scene was supposed to be a lot longer than what it was. It got shortened because, one, Tupac was not showing up. And then, two, he was, you know, the, his, I guess his activity kind of scared them. So they was like, uh, and that and that age was like new then. People didn't know. So it was like, yeah, we he might need to get an age test. Because they don't work. And then, But, you know, Janet would have never did that. Janet, Jan, Jan, that, that ain't even Janet. She was just a trooper, and she did, did for real. And she used to, I used to talk to her about that. She's like, I didn't say that. I didn't do that. To your knowledge, yeah. did the test ever happen? Um, no, they never did. They never, they never, they never got. Tupac refused the test, right? Yeah, but by then, you know, people were getting tired of Tupac. He was, you know, he was doing showing up three, four hours late. You know what I'm saying? It was like, come on, let's get the scene over. Because mm-hmm. I think they they were trying to fire him, actually, but they couldn't because there was uh, so much into it. And that last, I wasn't like, I didn't work the last week, but so they just wanted to get that scene over with in in the movie and get him out and be done with it. Yeah, man, you are a great storyteller, and one of the greatest stories that I've ever heard you tell. <laughs> 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 no, what's the story? No, no, we're gonna, we're gonna come back. We're gonna come back. We're gonna circle back around to that. <laughs> but one of the greatest stories I ever heard you tell was when you met Russell Simmons <laughs> and how dismissive of him you were. Yeah, <laughs> can you share that with the audience? Yeah, cause I used to see Russell Simmons at you know, but I didn't know who he was. Yeah. So Russell used to come to the Comedy Act Theater, Stan Latham, Russell Simmons. Um, and who else? Uh, Ralph Farquhar. So he great writers. Um, but I didn't know what they had in mind. These, these old cats in there, you know, they didn't figure out Hollywood, but they're thinking about Def Jam. So when they see certain comedians and stuff, so I see Russell, but I didn't know. I see he was just always be drunk, badly dressed. You know what I'm saying? And then he slobbering. He was, yeah, he, he was funny, man. You take my number. He, he would do some things with you. And I was like, well, who the hell is this dude? <laughs> right? So he wrote his number down, scribbled it on something. I threw that shit away. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Rodney Tanksley, who was, who was, he was Robin Harris's valet and Robbie Reed's boyfriend, was like, what, what did you just say to you? I said, me talking about trying to manage me and stuff, you know, and he, you know, he, man, they, some, just somebody else talking crap. He said, he want to manage you. He want to, what he want to do? And he got some stuff for you. He said, man, he, well, did he give you his number? I said, yeah, man, I threw that shit away. He was like, <laughs> he was in where? <laughs> I said, the trash can. He went dog through. He said, you better find a number. That's Russell Simmons, man. Did he I said, who the hell is Russell Simmons? He's like, Crush Crew, uh, Run DMC. And I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> you started looking for I'm number digging two. in for that number two, dog. In front of everybody. Who's in that trash can? <laughs> it ain't on this hot dog. <laughs> Popcorn. Did you ever find the number? Um, 
Yeah, we found it, but, you know, it didn't. He kept coming back around, but then I found a number, but it wasn't, you know, it was like, okay. But they kept coming, so it was like, okay, you got the number. We got you on the line. But but Russ would be drunk, so I don't even know if he remember giving me the number. Right. Because he would go back to New York and then stand, and then people were like, "Okay, you on the list." But, but I was I was chosen as one of the ones that was going to be um, on Def Comedy Jam. But Robin Harris was supposed to be the first host. Mm. 